Hello everyone, welcome to another Python tutorial series, and in this video, I'm going to talk about coding a 3D funnel waterfall animation with the Yersna engine. And so, when I visited Singapore years ago, I saw this very cool indoor funnel waterfall at the Changi Airport. It is a 40 meter tall, and it is the tallest indoor waterfall in the world. In this video, I'm going to create a funnel waterfall animation with the Yersna engine, and I hope you like it. So first of all, let's import our Yersna module. So from Yersna, import star. And we also want to import numpy uh, as np. And once you've imported our modules, we can set up Yersna by writing app is equal to Yersna and app.run. And what we can also do is add some parameters. So we're going to have a num ver variable equal to 40. And we're also going to have a radius variable equal to np .lin space with 4.3 and num. So num is going to be the number of entities that we're going to be using to represent one waterfall stream. And there are going to be five waterfall or five water streams altogether. A uh, radius is a uh, nd array representing the radius of each entity np.lin space produces an evenly spaced nd array from 4 to 0.3. And now let's have the x and y coordinate systems for the entities of one first stream. So we will have our angle is equal to 0, and x1 is equal to radius times np. Cosine of the angle x or z1 is equal to the radius times np at sine of the angle and we will have y1 equal to negative 3 divided by the absolute value of x1 plus 3 and so that was our first stream now let's create our second stream and instead of writing this again I'm going to copy and paste and I will quickly change the angle of our second stream to 60 over 60 over 180 multiplied by np dot pi and I will change these values to x2, y2 or x2, z2 and y2 and I'll also change this to x2 and I will leave the rest of the values the same actually I will need to change this y2 equal to y1 and I will leave uh, x2 and z2 as it is now for this I'm going to create our y3 so or entity 3 uh, and we're also going to create entity 4 and entity 5 so for entity 3 I'm going to change this angle to 90 over 180 uh, times np dot pi. I'll change this to x3, y3, or z3 and y3. Now I'll also change entity 4 to 120 over 180. I'll change these to x4, z4, and y4. And I will make this angle for entity 5. 180 over 180 over 180 times np dot pi and change these values to x5 z5 and y5 now basically we can create our five entity lists which will hold the entities that we're going to create shortly so i'm going to create this these lists right here so e1 is equal to none times num so they're initially going to be empty and I'm going to do this for uh, five or four other lists so now e2, e3, e4, and e5 so now I have five empty lists that hold uh, num empty values and now in this case once I have these lists I'm going to loop through to create the entities for the five strings using a for loop so for, and I'll go down, i in range of num, 
uh, e1 of index i is going to be equal to an entity with the model equal to a sphere. Sphere. I'm going to set the color equal to color dot red. Set the scale equal to point one. Set the position equal to x1 of index i, and also y1 of index i, y1 of index i, and z1 of index i. And I'm going to do this for uh, e2, e3, e4, and e5. So I'm going to copy, paste, paste, paste. I'll change these values to e2, e3, e4, e5. And I'm also going to change these colors. So instead of making it red for every single entity, I'm going to make E2 yellow. I'm going to make, whoops, E3 white. I'm going to make E4 cyan. And the last one, I'm going to make it green. And I also want to change these positions instead of uh, X1, Y1, and Z1 for all of them. I want it to correspond with the correct uh, list. So five it should be two, two, three, three, four, five, four, five. Okay, cool. So now if I run this, we have our five static waterfall streams with different colors. And you see that they're kind of moving inwards, which is exactly how we want it to be. And when we animate them, we want the, um, the spheres to go inwards. So now it's time for, now it's time to actually animate these, uh, little, these waterfall, this waterfall. And to animate it, we will create an update function. And so we can write a define update function right here and create our global e1, e2, e3, e4, e5 and set the speed equal to 0 0.005. So here we just set our global variables and the speed variable refers to the speed at which the water is going to fall. And to animate our first waterfall stream, we will set the angle equal to zero. Uh, create a for loop to iterate through the uh, list. So for entity in E1, set the radius equal to entity dot x over np dot cosine of the angle and set the radius uh, or subtract the speed from the radius. So radius minus equal to the speed and now for each entity, I will change entity.x is equal to radius times np.cosine of the angle. Entity.z is equal to the radius times np.sine of the angle. Now entity.y is equal to negative 3 over the absolute value of entity.x and then plus 3. And now we want to check if the radius is less than 0.3, then, so if radius is less than 0.3, and this is going to be the boundary checking, then we want the entity dot x is equal to 4 times np dot cosine of the angle. We'll set the entity dot z equal to 4 times np dot sine of the angle, or angle and entity.y entity entity is equal to negative 3 over the absolute value of entity.x over np.cosine of the angle plus 3. And so what the boundary checking does, which is this if statement, is that every single time the radius is less than 0.3, a new entity will appear, will reappear at the top of the waterfall with these coordinates. So now I've basically uh, created this animation for uh, E1, which is the first stream. I'm going to copy and paste this. 
uh, this for loop along with this angle, so this angle and for loop, for E2, E3, E4, and E5. So this is going to be for E2, E3, E4, and E5. And the, the only things I'm going to change for each for loop is the angle and this uh, list. So I'm going to set this to E2. For E2, I'm going to change the angle to 60 over 180 times np.py. For E3, I need to change this to E3. And I'll change this one to 90 over 180. 90 over 180 times np.py. For E4. I'll set the angle to 120 over 180 times np.py. And lastly, I will set E5, the angle of E5 to 180 over 180 times np.py. Now if I save and I run this animation, oh, let's see what happens. For lists E2 to E4, I noticed that you have to actually for list E2 to E4, you actually also have to um, when you're setting the entity dot y, it should be negative three divided by the absolute value of entity dot x over np dot cosine of the angle. And so we need to add this one, so this line inside of this uh, absolute value for e2 to e5. So I'm going to quickly add that. I'm going to paste this right here. So entity dot x over np dot cosine angle. We'll do that here. And okay, we'll do it there. Uh, e4. Now e5 would uh, paste that there. So nt dot y is equal to negative three divided by the absolute value of nt dot x divided by np dot cosine angle. And remember for e1, all you're going to leave it as negative uh, three over the absolute value of nt dot x. So if I run this. Now we have a much better looking uh, waterfall animation. And you see that whenever these um, uh, droplets fall underneath a certain point, there are new droplets adding into each stream, which is exactly what we wanted. And now that we have our final animation basically down, let's add a title to the animation. So to add a title, I'm going to go all the way to the bottom, wrap before app.run, and I'm going to write text. Uh, with the text equal to, I'm going to call it funnel waterfall. So the position equal to 0 uh, 0.4. And set the origin equal to 0, 0. As well as set the background, background equal to true. Okay, so now let's run our animation to see what it looks like. So I'm going to run this, and now we see that we have our nice stream, our nice waterfall. We have five separate streams, each of different color, and these uh, each bead or each droplet goes down, and when it falls below a certain point, you notice that they are respawning and at the top of each stream. So that's pretty much it. This is the end of this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.